Hey everybody, how's it going? So the question came up numerous times on the show, so I'm going to do this video by request for you guys, and that is, is the new Cali Cabs simulator from Get Good Drums any good at all? Oh, well, this is going to get interesting now, isn't it? All right, let's skip the bullshit, get right to the point. The newer Celestian Vintage 30s don't sound as good as the ones from the late 90s and early 2000s. That's the fucking truth, believe me. I know this firsthand because I spent many, 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 many fucking hours trying to get that kind of sound out of my Mesa cabinet, and it just wasn't fucking happening. I had an older Marshall cab uh, with the Vintage 30s in it that had the Made in England speakers in it, and I thought they were great, but I thought, oh, let's upgrade to a Mesa cab because that's what everybody else is using, and that's what my clients want. So I sold that Marshall cab like an idiot and got a newer Mesa cab, and it never sounded anywhere nearly as good because it had the Chinese-made Vintage 30s in it. And when Celestian moved production from England to China, something changed with the Vintage 30, and you just can't get... <laughs> That kind of sound out of a Chinese-made Vintage 30, it just doesn't fucking happen. Believe me, I've tried. It doesn't matter how much you struggle, how much you adjust your mics, it's not going to fucking happen. The thing is, the Vintage 30 is fucking weird because there was a, a, something that went on there for a couple of years where they had a very, very distinct kind of grindy tone, and those wound up in some of the angle cabs, and they sounded absolutely phenomenal. I got a chance to go over to Germany and check out Lasse Lambert's cab and see what he used on the Ailstorm record, and as soon as we plugged in, it's like, bam, there's the fucking sound that I've never been able to fucking get. Well, the Mesa cabs from the late 90s and the early 2000s have a certain distinct tone on it that is synonymous with a lot of metalcore and just numerous modern metal records. And you just can't get that kind of sound out of a regular Mesa cab, off the shelf Mesa cab these days. It just doesn't fucking exist. So, what happened was Adam Nolly Get Good from the band Periphery went on a search for some of these classic cabinets, bought a whole bunch of them and sifted through them and came up with a plugin to recreate that sound for you guys. And he's really taken a lot of the guesswork out of this stuff as well. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Celestian can't build good speakers in the modern age. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, if you take the hemp back and blend it with the EVH, you can get something really incredible. And I think that's going to be kind of a new direction where the tone should go, to be honest with you, because the Vintage 30 thing's kind of been done to death. However, if you're after that classic metalcore Vintage 30 sound, this is the plugin you're going to want to get because, damn, it has got it in spades. <laughs> Yeah, that's just all kinds of fun. That's really got that classic Mesa cab sound in spades. And yeah, of course, they can't use the word Mesa, so they're using the word Cali, and that's absolutely fine. That's where those cabinets came from. And this is the thing. I've given Mesa a real hard time over the years for shitty products like the Cab Clone Mark I. But when it comes to guitar cabs, their game can't be beat. They're basically the gold standard for modern metal tones. And yeah, they sound phenomenal. And we've got this amazing plugin here, which lets us go through. How many of these fucking things do we get here on this? We've got one, two, three, four. We've got six fucking cabinets to go through here. And uh, if we just solo one of these up, I'll take you through this real quick just to show you what's available. Did I mention this plugin's only going for like 40 bucks right now? It's normal 50. I think it's going for 40 over on the Get Good uh, website. So we get, that's just our massive cab. And we get a bunch of mics to check out. 414, 184, 160. Now I'm not hearing a massive shift in tone here. Except for that, 421, yeah, that's always the ice pick in the forehead. And that's apparently a vintage uh, 421. R121, cool. Then again, uh, Nolly's saying, you know, he placed these microphones like perfectly for each instance. So I'm not going to deba debate that. Oh, we got 57. And a Fredman technique as well, which is one of my particular favorite. 
And we got a dark and bright knob here, except for on the Fredman, because you can't do dark and bright like that, because I'll just fuck things up completely. Uh, let's check out on the 57 here. Now, I noticed the bright and dark knob really doesn't do a whole lot. Now, this product is obviously for the desktop musician. That's why I've got this set up here. Like, so I've got the Engel Iron Ball SE going into a two notes right into the computer. This is exactly who this is set up for. It's for a guy who doesn't have any experience miking live cabinets, doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, just wants to plug in and get great tone with no fucking around. And I think they've achieved that uh, very well here. So, like, mission fucking accomplished. That's just. No EQ in my signal chain at all. I like that 414 sound. Blend the two. We get something cool here. That's super cool right there. And we got a whole bunch of presets and whatnot. But we've also got different cabinets as well. We've got different instances. I think, how many cabs we got here? Yeah, we've got six cabs. So we'll keep it on the 57 here and just kind of go through them real quick. A little bit brighter. A little bit snarlier. A little bit fizzier, maybe. That's interesting right there. So we can, we can do a bit of a blend here. Now these are all, which is, what's really nice about this is they're all phase aligned so you don't have to dick around. Everything's just gonna work. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty hard to fuck up, to be honest with you. I like the fact that they have taken a lot of the guesswork out, because if you're a beginner, this is something you're definitely going to want to check out. It's definitely going to get you the kind of tone you're after with minimal fucking around, which I think is fantastic. Now, uh, I'm just kind of curious, what's going to happen if I take this, turn this to... Oh, uh, let's, let's just solo this up with the 414 and let's do a couple different cats. That's pretty cool right there. So let's. Now we're getting some pretty subtle shifts here, just kind of a little bit different profile going on. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Remember, we're just doing instances of the same style cabinet. So the, the shifts are going to be pretty minimal. I got to say, I'm kind of surprised uh, at some of the frequency shifts between microphones. <laughs> Like a 414 to a 57. That's pre a pretty small shift. And my experience in the real world going from a 57 to a 414, it's uh, a little bit more of a gigantic leap than that. That's for sure. But once again, I think this has been dumbed down for the guys who just want to get a tone that works. Because I'm not hearing huge shifts in tone here from mic to mic. Maybe the 160 there. That's nice and fat, actually. Let's uh, let's bring the 57 in there, brighten that up just a touch. Yeah, that's just fucking cool. Wow, that's really, really nice. And I think I'm actually going to save that as a preset because I really like how that turned out, actually. That was took about two minutes of dicking around to get that. So, like I said, I'm not hearing a realistic shift from mic to mic to mic. They've taken a lot of the guesswork out just to get you to where you want to go. So, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you just want to play guitar and not do a lot of engineering. That's absolutely fine. I've got no problem with that. <laughs> Let's uh, throw one more ribbon in there and then maybe another bright mic just to have some fun. Let's uh, throw our own 21 on this. We'll solo that up, see what we get. get see what we need to find a cab. Let's try a couple different cabs. I'll go with the thick one. 
you want to brighten that up a touch. R121 is going to be a, a dark mic anyway, so let's brighten that up. Bring it down. We'll de-solo that and just use that to thicken things up a little bit more. That's pretty cool right there. Now, they've also got this master EQ here. And that's just kind of like a little bit of a finishing touch kind of preset EQ curve. Not bad. I kind of like it without it, though. And the whole idea here is it's set up so that you're not going to have to spend a lot of time EQing to get your guitars to sound good in the mix. Uh, in fact, I've got my EQ turned off completely on this. I don't even have one in my signal chain here because I just like the sound coming out of it right now. They've done a lot of the hard work. I don't even have a C4 on this, which is what I normally have to, like, stomp down on the palm mutes. I think they've done a pretty good job here. <laughs> See if anybody remembers that one. I'm sure the guys in Celtic Frost would prefer if I didn't play that riff. Now, I got to say, they've really dumbed this down, and it's super easy to work with, and it's super easy to get great results in the mix. Check this out. Now, just to make things interesting, I switched over to a software amp sim. I brought up the STL Lassa Lambert, and uh, we're plugged into the virtual Driftwood Purple Nightmare software. And uh, just kind of want to show you this, how it works well with uh, the Cali cabs. <laughs> Yeah, that's chuggy as fuck. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. The fact we're getting that kind of tone out of just pure software. That's pretty cool. That's a very thick sounding amp sim. The uh, Las Alamert, yeah, it's just fucking killer. But yeah. Just combined with that uh, Get Good uh, Cali Cabs. Wow. <laughs> That's not bad at all. I'm, I'm going to save this just uh, so I, I, I don't lose this uh, <laughs> as thick. But I mean, like, you know, there's some great presets done here by uh, by Misha Mansour and, of course, Nolly as well. You know, simple detail. Let's check that out. Yeah, it's a little brighter. The D word. That's really goddamn bright. Kitchen sink. Let's see what this is. Oh, all the 57s? Yes, of course. And ultra... Let's try that. I like that one. How about warm bloom? Of course, he's using a lot more mics, so there's a volume shift. Cool. I like that quite a bit. And then if we check out some of the Nolly ones, I think I was messing around with uh, f who? Pew? Yeah, that's pretty cool as well. Slab O Tone. Yeah. 
All right, so is this plugin any good? Yes, yes it is. I kind of feel like you're on rails a little bit. You can only do so much. So if you're a beginner, you don't know what you're doing when it comes to miking up cabinets and whatnot. You just want to get good tones with minimal fucking around. Yeah, this is definitely going to be worth checking out because it sounds really fucking good. Now, if you're into engineering and you're working on, say, clients records or something like that, and you want to make sure that they don't sound like everybody else's, might not be the best choice because it is that classic Mazic Cab Vintage 30 thing that became so popular over the last 20 years. And it's become so popular, it seems like a lot of metal bands are afraid of doing anything else lest they be seen as individuals. So that's kind of the moral dilemma about this thing. It's like, does it sound good? Absolutely. Does it sound like everything else? Probably, so there is that. But if you want good tone and you don't want to fuck around getting that tone, this is definitely the plugin to check out. I wish this thing was available back in 2005 when I was ripping my hair out learning how to mic cabinets. It would have saved me a lot of grief because it would have at least been a great jumping off point where I could compare what I'm getting with this to the real thing. Anyway, links in the description below. You can check it out over at Get Good Drums and it's only 40 bucks. So I'd say, yeah, why not check it out? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.